Hey, what's up? This is Todd Smith, and I'm back with another video. Roland is really hitting it hard today in the news lately with their release of the new boutiques. So I figured I'd make a video. Roland Boutique, love it or hate it. It's basically the idea itself. Not an individual boutique, but more do the boutiques themselves appeal to you. The boutiques are another one of these sins that are kind of at the center of controversy. You seem to have people that love it or hate it. They've got various reasons for both ends of the spectrum. I own two of the first generation boutiques, which are now, I'm pretty sure these are out of print, I think. And it is the JU06 and the JP08. These are a recreation of the 80s Juno 6 in Jupiter 8. Uh, they brought in the second generation, which brought in a recreation of the Acid Classic 303 and also a recreation of the TR09. Now comes the third iteration, the third generation, a boutique sized TR808 and a recreation of the 101 Classic Rollins synthesizer, the 101. The debate heats up even more on the people who do not like ACB technology. If you haven't heard what ACB is, that is Rollins' term for pretty much virtual analog, but it's their own special technology, which is called advanced circuit behavior, which is basically they're saying that their digital chips are working in an advanced way to recreate their analog chip behavior. The debate goes on on whether or not these things are even viable. A lot of people do not like them. And, and the main gripe for them is their size. As you can see, they are very small. People say they're synths for ants, synths for smurfs, and various other things. You'll see pictures online of people having tweezers to tweak their knobs. And it is by far the biggest complaint is that the landscape is too small and the knobs are too small for adults. Um, being an adult myself, I am of 38 years old. I can give my opinion on the two I own. The JU6 actually doesn't feel bad. If you're close to it, the JU06 is very easy to dial in and find sweet spots. The JP08 is I start to feel more of what people are saying about landscape. They had to cram so much into this because the JP08 is so much more of a complicated synth that that the sliders have less space. I would say are about almost half the size of the sliders on the JU06. Your switches are really crammed in there and I can start to see what people feel. With the JP08, I need an external controller to really, really feel comfortable with patching it. I don't really mind that because I have an Impulse 49. So I just, I use both these on my Impulse 49 and it, the control is great. You could see the JP08 being an issue because they had to cram so much stuff into such a small space. Um, and so in a sense, I agree with some of those people, but I think the things like the SH-101 and the more simplistic type synths that are like the Juno that you don't have as much crammed in there are going to be a lot like the ju 6 in the sense that that's not going to be the case. You're going to be able to dial in those sweet spots. So that's the thing to look out for, just how many sliders they're cramming in there. And if you see that they're about the sliders, the same size as the, as the JU, you're probably pretty good to go because like I said, I feel this is pretty comfortable and you can keep sweet spots. So beyond size issue, another thing that people really seem to really not like is that the, that Roland is staying in the past and they're not pushing the future. Um, my feeling on that is I do feel that Roland is staying in the past. That is truly obvious that they are recreating their historic synths with ACB technology, they will run out. You know, they can't re... <laughs> I mean, unless they keep coming up with different form factors, I mean, they, they can only recreate so many synths. So, um, and another thing is I feel that obviously it's warranted because 
people want these scents. They're selling and people are excited for them. They might not be you, but there's somebody else who is very excited to get their hands on a recreated version of that synth. And three, I think there's plenty of companies pushing brand new stuff. And if you don't want to buy recreated 80 cents, don't look at Roland right now because that's mainly what they're doing. They actually do have that other things that you could buy that are like, I'm pretty sure they came out with um, a rack mount, which was fairly high price, but super pushing things way different than what the boutiques are going. So if you really don't want that side of Roland, I'm pretty sure they offer it to you. It just seems the bulk of their product seems to be this type of stuff. But I'd argue that bedroom musicians are probably the biggest buyers of instruments right now. So this type of stuff is going to sell really well. And that's why you see the Volca. And that's why you see all these small gears popping up. Because bedroom studios are probably supporting more sales than huge studios at this point. I feel like... Companies like Teenage Engineering, Electron, and uh, other companies are pushing products that don't even try to act like anything that was in the past. And so, if you, and if you want those type of things, go that direction. Then you have all these little sub alternative synth companies that are now popping up because of Kickstarter and things like that that are allowing people to create these little synths out of nowhere where we actually have a huge boom in independent synth making i'd argue that synths are at the most diverse ever me myself i, I love these things they're between the the ju06 is a really kind of simple synthesizer but the simplicity is its power you the bass that can pull out of this single oscillator synth is unreal and then the ability to shift ranges on the fly and actually drop and bring in and drop your sub oscillator via slider really allows you to create kind of morphing type leads that drop up and down in pitch and change and it's just really cool that you can get some really cool effects so the um jp08 is a lot more complex <coughs> and i gotta take time with it a lot more and sit down and program it Generally, it takes me longer to find stuff that I want from it, but the sound range is a lot more broad and a lot more, um, a lot wider. So between the simplicity of the JU06, that lets me dial in things really quick, and the more complexity of the JP08, it gives me a really good so solid canvas for that era of sound. I'm actually thinking of picking up a few more of the boutiques. The SEO2 really appeals to me. The, that new 101 really appeals to me. So um, this, my, my boutiques could expand in the future. Form factor and small size is actually appealing to me because I'm going to be doing live shows soon and I don't have a roadie and I don't have a big car. I need things that are small and can fit in into my really small space and go with me so that's why i been buy things like the boutique and the teenage engineering in smaller devices that is because uh, again i don't have a roadie i'm doing this all myself i can't bring a bunch of big synthesizers unfortunately so these smaller type synths really appeal to me because i can bring hardware live but not have this huge footprint of these huge synths i gotta really worry about that's pretty much my opinion on the Roland Boutique line. I, I love them. What do you feel about them? Love them? Hate them? Interested? Not interested? Tell me why. Please try to respect everyone's decisions. These This can be a very heated topic here. So um, I'll respect yours if you put it down there. But please do not jump on somebody else's opinion and attack them. Because I will delete those type of comments. Um, just try to respect each other, guys. Because ultimately, guys, there's plenty of choices for everybody to be had here. What you want, you can find if you look for it. Well, thank you guys for watching. This has been awesome. I love these type of videos where I get to get opinions back from you guys. So make sure you leave those opinions in the comments. Uh, we're going to be doing many more videos like this. Jams, tutorials, doing, finishing albums, free 
patches, free samples, everything like that. If you like that type of stuff, please subscribe. This is Todd Smith. Thank you very much, YouTube. Have a great day.